Welcome to uh, Science Fiction Lit. I'm Mr. Herzog. I'm Ms. Sheehan. And uh, Ms. Sheehan will not be talking a lot today. No, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her voice is kind of shot. Is, I know that there's a lot of sickness probably going around uh, whatever school you're at, too. Uh, yeah. Something I was battling just last week. I was out last week and yeah. uh, just kind of the, the breaks of it. But we want to talk a little bit about Sci-Fi Lit, where we're at. Uh, we just completed the first week. And so hopefully you're enjoying the cor course so far. It's a lot of preliminary work. Uh, I did see that some of you responded to the video um, about the hero's journey and the making of myth. And it's fabulous. I think a good overarching look when we talk about science fiction, the way it's kind of structured, uh, certainly important. want to get into looking at week one now. Right now, you should, of course, have finished lesson one. You should have introduced yourself, done this little... What is science fiction thing that we have there? And the common story, uh, that should be finished. We are now into lesson two, which talking, talks about the validity of science fiction literature. And I don't know about you, Michigan, but this is fascinating to me because uh, I kind of consider science fiction almost the bastard child of literature. Oh, of because there's no, no one really says, you know, and you see that evidenced even when you look at stuff like the Oscars, um, where oh, science yeah. fiction traditionally is snubbed, despite some pretty phenomenal performances. Yeah. Probably it was a little bit of an anomaly. Joker got a lot of nod, I think because of how Jacqueline Phoenix just totally portrayed the Joker. Yeah. But typically not looked at. And the same goes in literature. People really don't say, oh, look at this great literature, um, unless you're talking about someone like Dune or Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But even then... Popular media doesn't really present it very um, welcoming. So why is it important? I think it's important. What does science literature do for us? That's what we're looking at, this second part of this opening module. Um, we're going to get into the ancestors. I think it's important before we get into some of the topical stuff that we're going to get into later on the course, where do we come from? Yeah. Um, what led us into where we're at? And so we're going to get into some really early science fiction. That, that's from Shelley. That from, um, uh, Wells. yeah, H.G. Wells, Poe. We get into some poems yeah. of the science fiction he wrote. Um, and that's important. The other thing that I think is so crucial for this week is you need to begin deciding on that novel, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see here's the culminating project as laid out. It's important to understand the requirements. You're going to choose a novel around 400 pages, um, and it can be two novels that equal that, or one novel, and it needs to be 400 pages or more. And you'll see that we start out with like some of the classics like Dune and Heinlein, and another one by Heinlein and Le Guin, and then Hyperion by Ta and Neuromaster. But then you get into some more modern stuff, and I want to say all this. That if you have a science fiction novel that you feel is revolutionary and it's not on this list and you want to read it, please email me or message me and say, hey, I'd like to do this novel. What do you think? I'll look at it. We'll look at it. We'll get back to you and say, yeah. Or we'll say, well, maybe you should pick another one on this list because the idea is to have uh, maybe read something you haven't read before and to kind of analyze some of the themes. And it does need to be a novel that probably hasn't just come out. There needs to be some criticism on it. Yeah. Because of what we're asking you to do with it. Yeah. Is there anything else? Well, I wanted to mention my favorite science fiction lit book isn't on here. It's um, Orcs and Crake by Margaret Atwood. It's a whole series. It's speculative fiction and eco dystopia. Highly recommend. Um, I do have a copy of the whole series if any of you guys are interested. Yeah, if you want to swing by. Uh, so what's the name of it again? Orcs and Crake. Orcs and Crake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so by M Margaret Atwood. Mm -hmm. And The Handsmaid Tale, though, do we have that on there? I think I thought I think we did. I think it is. Uh, we may have put Somewhere that on. If it's there. not, Handmaid's Tale is certainly one that is mm -hmm. that belongs on here. I don't see it. I don't see it on this list. It's not quite 400 pages, though, so I would recommend doing The Handmaid's Tale and its sequel, The Testaments, and doing them together. Yes. Probably You'll probably find a lot more criticism on The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. But both of them work together. And yeah. Uh, some very mature themes in it, just so you're aware. Oh, yeah. Uh, but 
certainly one, when we talk about a novel that speaks to current society, you can't make an argument that one does it better. Yeah. So, of course. All right. Uh, so, sorry we got a bit long winded there. Hope you enjoy the week. If you have any questions, please let us know. Please yep. sign up for Remind if you haven't oh, done gosh, so. Oh, yes, please. Uh, we have all our, did we put the reminders for this course in there already? Yeah. Uh, so, they're on there. Ms. Sheehan did that. So, that's it. Uh, can't wait to see uh, what you're saying. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye.